This brass wheel is spinning at ludicrous speed. But just how fast is ludicrous? And why don't we hear him on Radio Disney anymore? Also, what's the top speed the wheel can achieve using our 60,000 PSI water jet? And what do you do when even ceramic bearings fail in an explosive fashion, yet you still crave more and more speed? Will bushings be the answer we're looking for? We intend to find out. We're also going to cut up a fighter jet's fuel pump and see what that looks like on the inside. I'll start making the wheel out of this chunk of brass. No one told me brass was so heavy. After all these years of picking up my brass. I'll just stick it in the lathe and then realize I'm a moron and need to cut it down so the cutting head can actually cut. For some reason, the blade on this metal cutting bandsaw always needs to be replaced. Probably because some dingus keeps putting huge pieces of really hard metals in it. It hasn't moved from this spot in like 30 minutes. I'll just let you watch these satisfying cuts for a few moments so you can really feel connected with the finished product. Oh, perfect. Now I can finally put it in the lathe. Now why is it making that noise? It's raining in. I also took some time to work on my speed swapping of the lathe tools so I can maximize productivity. Now that the wheel is done, we need a stand because unfortunately the plastic skateboard from previous episodes doesn't fit the wheel. Don't you hate it when your custom machined brass wheel doesn't fit on your Walmart knockoff penny board? I hate it when that happens. Now watch as I bend the steel with my bare hands because I'm so strong. There we go. Perfect. Then I had Alex weld it for me because I'm a little sissy baby boy that doesn't know how to weld. One of these days I'll get a welder so I can be a real boy. This will help the tech armor to get a better reading. And for all you smarty pants that were saying because I did a black mark on a dark purple titanium wheel, and that's why I couldn't read it. Well, you're not smarty pants, you're dummy pants. And it was because the battery was bad. So get wrecked. These are some high quality bearings that we paid a lot for. And they worked really well on the titanium oil. All right, we are ready to go. We've got the water jet set up right here. It's going to blast it. Oh yeah, that is in there like swimwear. Six hours later. Oh, it's a miracle. Perfect. Here we go. Three, two, one. Bowsers. That was a little terrifying. It stinks. You smell that? I just smell you. Hey, that's not too bad. It's real hot. How's the wheel? wheel? Oh yeah, the wheel's hot. Holy moly. These are ceramic bearings and they are no more. Oh, look at all the shavings coming off. We have destroyed the wheel and the bearings. What's crazy is that the wheel was still building speed as the bearings exploded, meaning if we can make some good bushings, we should be able to go even faster. But first check this out. This is a fuel pump from an actual fighter jet. The amount of fuel these output every second is absurd. Let's see what makes it tick. So why don't you tell us how you got it? What, what do you do? How'd you get this fuel pump? I am an aircraft mechanic by trade and I volunteer at a aircraft museum here in Paso Robles, California. We got an F-111 delivered. There was a bunch of corrosion in the fuel tank, so we were gutting the fuel tank of all of its parts and I got a hold of a fuel pump. Sweet. All right, well, because even ceramic bearings, which are meant for high speeds, couldn't handle it, we're gonna have to make something ourselves. 
this is where the bushings come into play. A bushing accomplishes the same goal as a bearing, but it achieves it in a different way. They're used in turbos and other things that spin at extreme speeds, so it'll be perfect for our purposes here. I started by looking up a tutorial for how to make small parts. Okay, I've got the method down. Now watch this. Satisfying cut. Now I just need to cut down this part so I can cut down this part so I can cut off the that part. Finally, I have made a top hat. Now these cuts need to be really precise so I'm being very careful. Unfortunately, I should have been careful er because I cut too far on this one. Oh, hat, oh, hat, that's hot. We got ourselves a bushing. Call me George W. Bushing. Like All that fabrication really got me tuckered out, so before I do any testing, I need to relax a little. You can join me if you want. Oh, glad you can join us. Have a seat. Care for a drink? You might be wondering why I brought you here. Well, you're in grave danger. But I can't tell you about it here where someone will hear us. We gotta go somewhere else. Come on. The internet is like a vast ocean, full of things that are good, but also predators who want to harm you. Thankfully, NordVPN is sponsoring this video. A VPN makes it nearly impossible for hackers to get your location and information. Not even Hacker Man could get to you with NordVPN as your shield. Your data is very vulnerable to everyone. That includes people with bad intentions. They also offer secure password managers and encrypted data storage. With NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee, you can try it out risk-free. NordVPN has lightning-fast servers all over the world, so you can surf at your normal speeds from anywhere. This allows you to change your location and access shows that aren't available in your country. Look, I'm in a pool. Now I'm in the ocean. description box below, you'll get a major discount on NordVPN products. So go check out the description box. Got a blast. <sighs> this bushing goes in one side with an aluminum sleeve that I made and was too lazy to record, which closes the gap between the bolt and the bushings. The other bushing goes in the other side and you put all that on the bolt. That's mounted to the And that's all held on by these nuts. <laughs> That's 73,000. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, let's let it stop. Ah! Stop that. Ah! Ah! Well, the problem is the nuts moved as the wheel spun, and now that wheel is locked in there because this was spinning so fast, it just cranked it down. The whole Johnson's moving. Uh. That is on there like lawn wear. Well, this aluminum sleeve is uh, not moving. It is threaded on there. Yes, it has now become one with the bolt. So we're just going to move the whole thing over to here and test it that way. It can still move freely without hitting the side. All right, take two. Three, two, one, go. Well, it was showing like 60, 70. Yeah. We might need to do the pitch one. 
Yeah, we're probably gonna have to figure out the pitch. Well, that's really hot. Probably because the bushings are creating a lot of friction. That thing got a dang good scoring right there. Uh, yeah, that's deep. You can tell that the first test kind of kept it shallower since it moved, but that just cut in deep. Look what the abrasive and water did to the wood. Oh, that's what happened to the bushing. No wonder it generated so much friction and started making that noise. I wonder how fast we could get the wheel spinning if the bushings didn't blow up like this. Oh, this one's fine. Maybe just because this one didn't fit quite as well. So it had more wiggle room, so it was destroyed more. Are you ready for the big reveal, Danny boy? I'm ready for the big reveal. Oh, oh shoot. Okay. Right here. So we got some copper coiling going on. Looks like you did a good job of getting the resin in there. It didn't quite get into there. I can only imagine this is some sort of motor to pump the fuel, of course. After all, it is a fuel pump. Ha! I didn't hear the joke. We've got the tubing coming down here. That's one of the valves that comes down through here. And then I don't know what this is. I wonder what this metal is right here. Let's see. Titanium, for sure, titanium, uh. no doubt about it. Hey, 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 hey. It is a Ventura, a primary Venturi booster pump, a little DC motor. Well, actually, it's an AC motor. It spins up super fast, like five gallon, three, five gallons a second, just evacuates fuel through a little tiny hole. And that creates a low pressure zone like a Venturi that takes more fuel up to the engine to drive the engines. Thanks for sending us that, Chris. Not a lot of people get to see that. Okay, it's time to figure out just how fast those wheels were going using the powers of music. I still dabble, in case you were wondering. Oh, you know, hardest difficulty, 259 notes, streak 98%, nothing too crazy. If we take the pitch at the time it was measured and compare it to the pitch when it was fastest right after the jet is turned off, we get 1,398 hertz and 1,018 hertz. You do some quick maths, and that gives us a fairly accurate approximation. Here are the results for the bearing test and both the bushing tests. Now here's where it gets wild. If you take the 2905 hertz divided by the 990 hertz, you get 2.93. Multiply that by the 73,000 at measurement. That gives you 215,000 RPM. Now, major asterisks here, our tools and methods may not be 100% accurate, but up until this point, it's been pretty reliable. And you can hear the stark difference in pitch when it's at its max and when it's measured. It really does sound two or three times higher, but for all intents and purposes, the tools we're using have given us this result. That just goes to show you how useful bushings are. If you haven't seen it, click here to watch the video where we did this with the titanium wheel to see how that performed. I got bubbles in me pants.